So Frank, you're a wildlife biologist. A lot of people right now are talking about the turkeys and their populations and around here too, they're really declined. Yeah. What is it that we can do to help the turkey population to rebound? Um, I assume native plants have a role in that because native plants, native animals go together. Yeah. I don't know, what, what's yeah. your take on it? I think you're right. Um, the, the, the turkey decline has, has been very dramatic, not only in Missouri, but really across the Midwest and across the eastern part of the United States. <clears throat> and it's mostly due to habitat loss or habitat succession. So where we've had open landscapes succeed into more mature forest. Okay. You know, we've all got this, this concept in our head that um, turkeys are a forest bird, right? They're a deep forest bird. And, and perhaps that is because that's where they retreated to back years and years ago when they were persecuted by an overhunted, that's where they retreated to, that's where safety was, and that's where we got them to, to do the relocations. Interesting. But the wild turkeys are more of an open woodland savanna type species. They must have a diverse mix of native plants in order to thrive. And the reason for that is they derive their nesting, they derive their cover, they derive their poult and brood survival through native plants. They're much like a bob white in the sense that, of course, they nest on the ground. When the chicks are hatched, they're precocial. They have to move through the landscape, but they're looking for insects, right? And deep forest with, with deep leaf layer and no herbaceous ground cover not only lacks insects, but it lacks overhead cover for protection. So pult survival is really low. So what we really need to focus on for, for, to turn this turkey decline around is pult survival Nesting success and poult survival are the two big ones. And where poult survival really increases and where we have a diverse mix of native grasses and forbs, where sunlight is coming through the canopy, we have a lot of, a lot of robust growth, it's producing tons of insects, that's where our poult survival is best. So a landscape like this, if we could create this across the landscape of wild turkeys, we can start turning that decline around. Yeah, okay, so you're saying poult survival yeah. and nesting success is like the big things. And so you're pointing to insects yeah. because we need the anything that's young has got to have a lot of food right. uh, going into it. And so we need the insects for it, for the young ones mm -hmm. there. And then what was the other components of, so we if we have the insects, which is drawn by the forbs, right? Right, right. Um, the native forbs and legumes draw those insects. Mm -hmm. Then what was the next part of Well, the that? next part is this overhead cover. This, this canopy of overhead cover it is really important because, you know, poults are, are very, very vulnerable uh, until they can really fly, which is they, about two weeks they can start to jump up into low limbs and okay. get off the ground to roost like the adult turkeys can. Up until then, they're living on the ground and they're relying on mama to brood them keep them warm, keep them safe from predators and keep them safe from rain and things like that, keep them warm. And so pult survival is really, um, is really predicated on having this open can, or excuse me, this, this canopy of grasses, forbs and legumes that's fairly open at the ground level so that they can move through the, through the vegetation. Okay. They can pick insects that are on the vegetation. And if they get wet, they can step out into a sunny place, such as right by your foot, which is kind of sunny. They can get warm pretty quickly. They okay. can move to a sunny place. They can get warm and dry off. In a closed canopy forest, those, those things really don't exist. You know, that canopy of herbaceous cover and that places for them to get warm when they get wet really doesn't exist. So, so we're looking for this canopy of overhead cover and we're looking for a diversity of plants that provides the insects that they need to really put on rapid growth. Yeah, so the insects and then that canopy, and we're not talking about like forest canopy right, here. Right. We're talking about this waist high, yeah. knee high canopy level is what we're really yeah. concerned about. And then having the sunny spots intermingled with the waist high stuff yeah. so that we can have both right side by side. Yeah, yeah, that's important. So if you had just had a, a rank grassland that had that overhand canopy that they needed, well, they wouldn't be able to move through that very well, okay. so they would get hung up and then mama could just move on. Or if they can move through it, insect diversity is super low because there's not a lot of forbs in there. And 
it's a place where, I mean, even if it doesn't rain, this time of year when chicks are hatched, we get a lot of dew, or when poults are hatched, we get a lot of dew. And a really a heavy dew in the morning, if they can't get out and get warm, that can affect survival over time. And so they, a rank grassland just doesn't do it, nor, nor does an, a closed canopy forest. Places that have a, a diverse canopy, like you said, an herbaceous canopy, that has bare ground, places that birds can move around, is really what we're looking for to maximize pulp production. And we've all seen turkeys in fescue fields, we've all seen them in closed canopy forest. They can survive through there, but can they thrive? Can they turn the population trajectory around in those landscapes? And the answer is no, they can't. So we need more of this type of landscape, or excuse me, this type of habitat on the landscape to really make them thrive have higher pult survival, which then um, translate into higher adult survival as we go. Okay, okay. So as we think about what do we do for the native turkey, for our native turkey species, and a big part of it sounds like it's to, you know, if you've got these partially wooded, you know, thin, thin out some forests, yeah. I guess that's the, so this particular area, what we did was we, this was a closed canopy forest, uh, had been for a number of years. We logged it, mm -hmm. um, obviously left quite a few trees around as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we planted the native grasses and wildflowers in here. Sometimes they'll come back on their own, but we found that the best time to plant it is right when you open that canopy up mm -hmm. because otherwise you may get some invasive weeds or you know, something you didn't really want. Mm -hmm. So we planted this. So that's what we went through here. Are there other ways that you can think of that you can create this kind of habitat? Um, yeah, I, I think what, what we recommend for the most part is, is where we're gonna make our biggest strides is improving our closed canopy forests and then also improving our pasture lands such that they're just not monoculture fescue, right? So let's take the closed canopy forest first. And, and the first thing that we, we recommend is exactly what you do. If you have the ability, um, and you have the, the, the tree structure and size to come in and do some logging, that's a great way to get this, to kickstart this process. You get a little income off of it, plus the work that you would be doing thinning the forest by yourself or with your friends or with your family is done for you. That mm -hmm. initial work is done for you. Now you may have to come in and do some additional thinning where there was trees that the loggers didn't want to take, if they didn't want to cut you know, certain things, so they're unfavorable trees or trees to open up the canopy. But um, the bottom line is we need to open up the canopy on our closed canopy forest, get more sunlight into the ground. And then the next thing that we need is prescribed fire. So a lot of times, as you mentioned, when you open up this canopy and you get sunlight to the ground, you still have a pretty thick leaf layer in a lot of cases. And so removing that leaf layer through prescribed fire, then will, if the seed and root bank is there, allow herbaceous vegetation to really explode. Now, it may not be as diverse as what you've got here because you planted it, but it will be a diverse mix that will fit those life history needs of a turkey. So that's the first thing we need to think about is really thinning and opening up these closed canopy forests to get them in a condition that was more uh, of a prehistorical or, or early historical condition. When these yeah. woodlands were more open, when they did tend to be savannas on southern and western slopes and on ridge tops and even on northern and eastern slopes, much more open than they are now. That, that produced a matrix landscape, a matrix across the landscape for wild turkeys. We've lost that. So that's the first thing we need to do to start reversing the decline. The next thing we need to do is, is where we don't have forest or we have forests on our neighbors or, or close canopy woodlands on our neighbors, what can we do on the property that we do have that's maybe more open? Okay. One of the things that we can do is diversify our grasslands because what this provides in this woodland setting, this diverse structure and diversity of species of native flowers, native grasses, native legumes, shrubs, we can do that in a, in a field setting as well. We don't have to we, we can plant that and establish it. So if we can take more cool season grass dominated operations and include more warm season grass forages, more, more warm season grass diversity within those, we can increase turkey survival in those landscapes. Well, first we can increase turkey usage in those landscapes. 
and then we can increase turkey survival because they've got everything that we talked about earlier. They, they can run around through these grasslands, they have an op a, a canopy that's just right above their head that provides protection, and there's lots of insects. So we can move sort of this type of diversity and look to an open landscape that really doesn't have forest and, and really yeah. increase that survival. Yeah. And then I guess as far as like, you know, if it's an agricultural landscape and somebody is grazing that diversity of plants, that's good or bad for a oh, turkey? Oh, that's, that's excellent for turkeys because what can happen over time is these grasslands can succeed and become too thick um, if we don't burn it. Um, and these, and you, you know, these grasses, they can many times outcompete forbs over time and become too thick. So we need to set that back. One way to set that back is with fire. Probably the best way that, that we found through the research that I and colleagues have done is to use grazing to set that back. Fire can set it back for a limited period of time and then it grows back up again. You get a, you know, a, a, a window of beneficial use. Grazing keeps that open, keeps those open spaces throughout the year. You can create those travel lanes, you can create that diversity. It may be a diversity of ragweed that comes up, but hey, for a turkey, that's great. Um, insect producing plant and it produces a really good uh, seed as well in the winter time or excuse me in the fall so grazing is, is a really top-notch choice to use in your grasslands especially your your diverse grasslands such as you've got here adding grazing just compounds that benefit for wild turkeys okay so as you talk about this Frank it looks to me like what I hear you saying is that you know, turkey, the decline in turkey population is in large part due to habitat loss. Sure. And so I hear you saying, like, if we can have a diversity of native plants, so the native grasses, the native wildflowers, forbs and legumes, the na a few native shrubs involved, whether it's in a, you know, whether there's some trees around um, in that same area or whether it's like out there where it's totally open and there mm -hmm. is no tree really out there, Either of those, a diversity of native plants is a great recipe for turkey success and like getting that habitat back is what's going to get our population of turkeys that's, back. That's exactly right because I think when we tend to think about it, when we think about turkeys as I mentioned as a forest bird and we think about them roosting in the woods, relying on acorns in the winter time and in the fall to get through, we totally forget where these birds are nesting, where they're hatching, where they're raising. That is the most important part of getting a bird to the fall so he can eat acorns and then eventually into the spring so we can call him up and have a successful hunt. We gotta worry about where we're producing them. And they are produced most effectively and most efficiently in these open landscapes, a diverse mix of grasses, legumes, wildflowers, shrubs mixed in, this is what's going to, what is, what's, excuse me, this is what it's going to take to sort of turn that trajectory around. We've got to start focusing on, on the chicks, on the poults, and increasing their survival across the landscape. So it's not so much of a predator issue as it is a, we need habitat issue. Yeah, it's not so much as a predator issue. You know, predators have increased over the landscape, but largely we can mitigate their effect by producing large areas of usable space for these turkeys to make it's very difficult for predators to find them. You know, if we're forcing turkeys to nest in only one small spot, that's, that's easier, right? Game of for, hide and seek is yeah, not very big at right. that point. But if we've got a landscape where they can nest anywhere, where they could brood anywhere, it's much tougher for, for predators to find them. So we can mitigate some of that predation pressure just by managing the landscape. And that's how we're gonna turn it around. I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost, and this is Frank Longcarriage with the Missouri Department of Conservation, a wildlife biologist. And as we've been talking about turkey habitat this morning, we've decided that the thing we're both passionate about is eating fried turkey breast. That's right. That's right.